Hi weaving friends, last week we talked all about floating selvages. We found out what they are, what we use them for and how to set them up on a table loom. And I also talked about a photo tutorial resource that I have for you that's available on my blog for rigid heddle weavers to set up your rigid heddle with floating selvages as well. So today we're going to be having a look at how I actually weave with these floating selvages in place. Do check out last week's video if you haven't done so already because that covers why I chose this yarn and this color for my floating selvage and also just gives you a bit more useful information before you launch into being able to use your floating selvages. Now I'm using a boat shuttle today but this works just the same way with a stick shuttle so either one is absolutely fine. And for the start of my project here, I'm making a runner and it's gonna be a sort of a skinny runner, not a table runner. And I'm gonna put it on top of a bookshelf. So it's a runner to go on top of a low sort of bookshelf that will be on display. And for the first part of this runner, I'm just going to be doing plain weave. Now I did tell you in the last video that usually floating selvages are used for non-plain weave projects but this is not specifically a plain weave project, it's a monk's belt project. And I'm going to be using it to maintain my really nice edges as I change all my weft colors and get into the monk's belt aspect of this piece. But the first part is plain weave and that's gonna be a nice and easy part for me to show you how these floating selvages function on the loom. To begin with, I'm going to go into my first plain weave shed, which on my table loom is shafts one and three. Now on this side, I always like to start with my shuttle on the left hand side. It helps me to keep my place and know where I'm up to, especially when I'm alternating between one and three and two and four tabby for my project, tabby being just the same as plain weave. So on this side, the left hand side, I'm taking my shuttle over the floating selvage. If you have a look here, you can see where your floating selvage is, even though it's the same color as the warp, you won't get confused about which is your floating selvage because it's the only thread in addition to the other floating selvage on the other side that is not threaded through its own heddle here. So all my string heddles are here. And all of these threads here have specific sheds to go into according to which heddle they're threaded in. The floating selvage doesn't. It's only threaded in a slot as we covered in the last video. And that's why it's floating. It's, it doesn't have an assigned place. And that means that I can manipulate it to where I want it to be. So for my first shed on the left, I'm coming through over the floating selvage. Now on the opposite side, the right hand side, I'm going to put my fingers underneath the floating selvage so that the shuttle will travel underneath it. So on the left hand side, I've gone over. Right hand side, I'm going under. And this is the key to weaving successfully with floating selvages, over under. Okay, so let's bring that thread through. And then I'll close my shed and beat. And now let's move over to the other side and you'll see me going back towards the left with the shuttle. My next shed for my plain weave or my next shafts are shafts two and four. So I'm bringing those up and I've got my shuttle. Now on the left, we went over the floating selvage and we came out underneath. And you'll see that if I lift this thread up right here, we don't want those little tie-on threads in the way confusing you. If I lift this up, it is actually sitting underneath my floating selvage. Now, if I took the shuttle back in underneath the floating selvage, have a look, this would draw in and my floating selvage and my outer warp thread would be left uncovered by the weft. So I know that I need to do something different. I need to go over the floating selvage this time. When I go over it, it's going to loop around the bottom and then go back into the shed. Now on the left hand side, because I'm going over on the right, I want to take the shuttle underneath the floating selvage on the opposite side. So again, I've gone over under, just on different sides as my shuttle changes place. So let's weave that shed. And when I've got my floating selvage, I, I still wanna make sure that my edges are good and I wanna make sure that my floating selvage is sitting up against the edge warp thread as though it is a warp thread. And then I can close my shed 
and beat once more. And now you can see that, here's the floating selvage right here, you can see that that thread has completely encased the floating selvage and that's exactly what we want. Now my shuttle's back on the left hand side and I'm ready for my next plain weave shed which is one and three because I'm alternating between the plain weave shafts. So on this side now, on my left hand side, I can see that my weft thread went underneath the floating selvage. That tells me that I need to go over it to encase it this time. And on this side, I will come out underneath it. So again, over, under. Changing sheds again, over, under. And it doesn't matter how wide your piece is. I do have a narrow piece here, but regardless of the size of your piece, you're still gonna be doing the same action. I like to watch the tip of my shuttle as it goes over to make sure it's un it's, it has gone over. And then I have my other hand ready to catch the shuttle if I'm throwing it. I'm not really throwing the shuttle for this project because it's not wide enough, but if I was throwing it, my other hand would be there underneath ready to catch. And once you've done this enough time, your hands will just know what to do. Two and four, and then over, under. See that hand, those fingers, they're there, ready to catch already, and I barely have to think about it. Okay, so if we speed this up a little bit, it really just looks like I'm passing the shuttle back and forth, and you can't really see that anything special is going on with the floating selvages because you have enough practice, you won't have to think about it. Okay, so I mentioned in the last video that these floating selvages become part of the piece. We do not take these out when we finish and that's why the color matching is important. So when I finish a piece, if I'm hem stitching, I will incorporate the floating selvage into the hem stitch as I do it on the loom on both, on both ends. Then by the time you take it off, you really can't even tell that it was ever there. It doesn't stand out and it just becomes part of the piece. But what you end up with is beautifully neat edges when you're done. Thanks for watching this video friends and as always questions comments are welcome down below don't forget to like and subscribe and share this video with anyone you think might benefit from it and until next time happy weaving